All right, we are back with a roster overview for season number two in the Waffle. Right now we have the entire league rated from highest to lowest. Let's take a look at the top players in the league. A lot of 99s, a lot of 98s. And here, one thing that stands out is we have Chubb here 98 for the Steamers, Burrow 99, but they've had a slow start to the year. Same thing, another dynamic duo. The two Joshes, very highly rated. Expect more. I expect more out of the Antlers and the Steamers with a quarterback, running back, one-two punch like that. But we're going to go team by team. Let's go alphabetically. Same as last year, if you recall, the Antlers. Let's, see, let's back up. Let's back up. Let's get an overview of the entire team. In here, we already took a look at the two Joshes. And then a, a bit of a drop-off. That's the price you pay to get a top-notch QB and running back. But Allen, he's got some weapons. You, you put Allen with a solid left tackle, right guard and receiver, and you think good things would happen. So here, going position by position, Josh Allen, 98, playing great. Kellen Mond hasn't played this year yet, but last year filled in nicely. At running back, things are about the same. Josh Jacobs, Leonard Fournette as the backup. Haskins, Ebner. No fullbacks. Receivers, Lockett and Gallup, still the main two guys. McKenzie in the slot. And then here, the biggest addition this year through the draft, Jeff Keller, 78 overall, but he's playing better than that. Isaiah Likely, a really good backup, but Keller's been a huge addition. Been noticing he's been racking up the stats. Uh, I think he's in the top leaderboard. I'll have to check the community page, but pretty sure he's top three in yards or at least has been fighting in and out of there. In here, uh, not a lot of line depth, but good left tackle, good guard, solid center, really good guard, and a good tackle. So the line is good as always. Defensive line is a weak spot. Tart is not bad. Chubb, Murray, and long name. Yeah, we, we can see the Antlers, more of an offensive team here. The uh, front seven, not as strong. Um, as far as the waffle goes, 280s corners is pretty good. And then they picked up Amir Burke through the draft. So they've got depth at least. They can go nickel. They can go dime. Forrest at safety. Adrian Phillips, Sidney Brown. A solid, an average to solid group of safeties. Alex Kessman, not a great kicker or punter. But there's not a lot of those to go around. It seems practice squad. So Antlers, I would say solid B, B plus team. A uh, good roster. Now let's make our way to the Armadillos, the Austin Armadillos. And as we look, Nick Bosa, his top dog, Chris Jones, strength in the D line, Corey Lindsley, and then it's a 10 point drop off here, but really good D at QB though. Four quarterbacks, you don't always see that, but Jared Goff, Andy Dalton, same as last year, except grooming the QB of the future, maybe. Dalton probably will retire. Randy Harris, not that great, but that's who they've got. Tanner McKee. Brees Hall, Damien Harris, both doing solid this year. Marcus Hayward through the draft. 68 is not bad. Deontay Johnson, Brandon Cooks, Tank Dell have made for a pretty good receiving core this year. Uh, last year too, actually. But here again, you can see the Vanguard Impact X Factor there uh, symbol. They already had Tyler Conklin last year. They go Paul, they go tight end in the draft with Paul Schultz, and that was a great move. Schultz has been amazing so far. And then on the offensive line, Wills Jr. 80, Gordon Young. Hey, he's young. He's 74. That's good though. Uh, 6'3", 328, big guard. Not bad, Corey Lindsley, one of the best centers. At guard, average guard, not bad. Right tackle, could be better, but could be worse too. There's a lot of holes on some of these teams' linemen. I would say pretty good line, above average line. Bryce Huff and Nick Bosa make a pretty good team on the defensive line, especially when you add Chris Jones into the mix. Nolan Smith Jr. at linebacker, Bentley down the middle, and Frank Clark on the outside. So it looks like to run the 3-4 and Looks good, good front seven. Byron Murphy, Byron Jones, and Byron Mosley. Oh, Emmanuel Mosley, okay. Keely Ringo. Kinda like the Antlers, low 80s. Average slot, Jeremy Chin at safety, Jordan Fuller, Riley Patterson, so they've got one of the 
One of the few teams with a decent kicker and punter. So good job by them. So overall, Armadillos looking good, mainly on defense. Four out of the top five are on defense for them. What about the Aviators? Well, highest rated overall is Jamar Chase. That's to be expected, same as last year. Lane Johnson still hanging around 95. But here's the difference, Justin Tucker comes up clutch for them every week. And Bakhtiari, forgot about this. Look at the book tackles. Keeping Jordan Love protected back there. J Love, M Corral, that just doesn't work the same. Matt Corral, 66, he doesn't play. But Jamal Williams has been doing pretty good this year. Receiving core, who do they have opposite of Chase? Donovan Peoples-Jones. Hasn't done much this year, but once in a while he'll have a breakout game. Traquan Smith, touchdown last week. Marquez, Marquez Callaway, Kincaid, and Tillman. Haven't really caught a lot of balls. Ertz, he's been the main target last year. Otten was the main guy this time. Uh, Ertz has been showing up more in the highlights there. And as we've seen, pretty good line. They've tried to address the guard situation in the draft. So Rainey, a good pick up there. Creed Humphrey. When you add Creed Humphrey, Trey Smith, and Lane Johnson together, that is one of the better lines we've seen probably will see that's a great offensive line but of course you can't have everything the d-line a little suspect no surprise why they went already dunlap in the first round with the fifth pick fourth or fifth pick there in the draft uh he's been great he's been more of a pass rushing uh d tackle he's been in the backfield a lot rashawn gary long carter solid group of linebackers you really only need one real impact guy if you can if you had to pick so so gary bringing the rush what about the secondary moore and peter so 85 80 78 that's about what every team has so far quandre Diggs looking good chuck clark not bad and then tucker of course 92 one of the best kickers of all time slightly down from last year i forgot what he dropped but but still hit a 61 yarder this year so far that's the longest of all the kickers bison's defensive line a plus patrick certain the second shutdown x factor leading the team but here is the true heart and soul dexter lawrence has been an animal the first two seasons and of course, you pair him with Trey Hendrickson and others. There's some; They have some lower rated uh, players also getting in the backfield as much. Daniel Jones, though, holding down the fort. And then the trusty backup, Brett Hundley. As erratic as Jones can be, you got to hope he stays healthy this year. Last year, he got hurt. Winston came in. Now, Huntley, 56. That would be tough. Uh, Dalvin Cook. Let Dalvin Cook. 89 still. A generous overall. He hasn't really done much. Antonio Gibson and Anthony Roten, the rookie. So a nice trio of backs. No fullbacks. And then we haven't heard much, I feel like, from the Bison's wideouts. Ridley, Campbell have been quiet. But Darius Slayton, he always seems to get some work out of the slot. And tight end, Darren Waller. Uh, he's pretty good at 86, but he hasn't got a lot of targets. Rhett Madden, he's finally got the X Factor unlocked here. Uh, the first round pick, he's showing up on some of the highlights. And so nice one-two punch at tight end to kind of make up for that lackluster receiving core. Even though they're pretty good. I mean, two guys almost 80. So they nearly have 380 receivers. Uh, but Bison's offense still lacking the stat department uh, team-wise. Dawkins at tackle, Glasgow at guard. Oof, here's the weak spot. Colombo. The rookie, oof, right guard and right tackle, all right. So here we may have found the problem. They're starting two rookies on the line and then a third 69 overall guard here. Might explain why they can't get the running game going as much or why Daniel Jones can't get a ball off. Uh, let's go to defense. Dwayne Smoot, Trey Hendrickson, Dexter Lawrence, and Mathis. It's a lot of highlights. I see Lawrence and Mathis getting in there. Only 72 overall, but I swear he is uh, putting in work above his overall grade. Hendrickson's been dominant. This Bison's defense has been holding this team together the first two seasons. Even though the overall is not that spectacular, it's kind of a crazy thing. Uh, Patrick Sertain, maybe it helps to have someone lock down half of the field if they're going man-to-man. 
Millie Cooker's good. Jordan Poyer. So there you go. A good pass rush and solid secondary. Better than solid, really. Eddie Pinheiro at kicker, 79. Everyday Eddie looking sharp. And Sanchez at punter, pretty good. Better than most teams. Got two guys in the mid-70s. So there is the Bisons. Kind of a team that sneaks up on you. A lot of defensive talent. And now to the London Black Knights. Travis Kelsey. Travis Kels. Whatever you want to call him. Taylor Swift's boyfriend. Um, best guy in the team. Which is not great to have your tight end be the best player. But here we go. By position. Matt Stafford. At quarterback we have Matt Stafford. Justin Fields backup last season. He was just barely lower overall. And now he's got the reins on the Black Knights, but things have not gone really that well. Jake Hayner is the backup. Jake Fromm. Jake from State Farm. Oh, John Wolford. Almost had three Jakes and a Matthew. They should cut John Wolford. Um, but yeah, the computer gets weird ideas. Got four QBs, four running backs. Joe Mixon, Ronald Jones. Mixon's been pretty quiet, but can't explain it. Jerry Judy's their best wideout. Even he is... Been hot and cold. George Pickens has had some moments, um, but really this offense can't get it together. Romeo Dobbs is kind of streaky. He's had, I think, a touchdown in week one and then nothing after that. Zane Zilstra, I think he got a fullback dive for a touchdown, but he's pretty much non-existent. And even Travis Kelsey, for as good as he is, if the QB can't get you the ball, um, then you're no use. So Black Knights have some thinking to do. They have a good left tackle, though. Solid guard, center, Right guard and tackle. Okay, this is a line you can work with. You can win with. So I don't really know what's going on with them. Defensive line here. 70s. Not amazing. Brian Burns is a bright spot. But even he is not breaking through the way you think he would. Devin White at middle linebacker. Trevon Walker. So overall, really good linebacking core. Probably the best we've seen so far as a group. Uh, corners not looking good. A couple of old guys. And now you understand why they went. Pat Morgan first round of the draft uh, he is the future there these two guys losing morale or something they got the arrow red arrow pointing down then same thing at safety nice pickup in the draft brian monty could replace juan thornhill pretty soon and terrell edmonds pretty good at safety uh, drafting really well in the secondary getting some low round uh, contributors and backups and then Koo, always a good kicker 80 johnston 74 so overall, you know, kind of an, a B minus team, B, I don't know. But forgot to mention no Dak Prescott this year, no Dak Knight for the Black Knights. He is retired. And so they're into the Matt Stafford era, which may just be an era of one year. He is 36. Could very easily see him retire. Uh, but that is the Black Knights. Now let's see the Blues digs. Huge year last year. This year hasn't quite come through for the Blues. It may not all be his fault. Uh, Diggs and Von Miller. Uh, 35 on Miller. It's getting up there. Marcus Williams. So let's go to quarterback Russell Wilson. He is going down. Last year, I think he was a little higher overall than this. But um, And I feel like I can tell the first few weeks of the season hasn't quite had that hustle, Russell and bustle magic that he usually has. Sam Howell. I mean, we could see a QB change if the Blues fall off. But I think they're, they're playing well enough. They have a good team. Aaron Jones, they can lean on him. Kenneth Gainwell, no fullback, but at receiver. Diggs and Myers in the slot are good enough to get open for Wilson. And Michael Mayer, huge week. Week three, we saw two touchdowns. So the Blues will be all right, even though Wilson's a little bit lower overall. He can manage. He can game manage. Isaiah Wynn, good left tackle, guard, center, Need improvement, but right guard looks good. And right tackle is all right, but not great. Greg Rousseau, though, here the strength of this team. Rousseau, 88. Von Miller, 92. So they get after it. And DeForest Buckner, three great pass rushers. And not to mention, they're bringing along Jared McClain, the first-round draft pick, uh, to make a nice front four. Is this the best front four so far? I don't know. The Bisons and them have been playing really well. Arden Key... Jermaine Pratt, no backups for Pratt. I guess they're all at right outside. Pete Werner, pretty good. B minus, C plus linebackers. JC Jackson is good. The rest kind of meh. Marcus Williams, though, excellent safety to pair with Harrison Smith. Not the same as he was, of course. He's getting older. 
little over, lower overall than last season. And that's the thing with the Blues. I feel like last year was their year. They started off like 8-0, and right? 7-0. and And then they kind of faltered. Uh, Bulls now. Jeffrey, Simmons. Uh, but Tua, 80, Tua's 85. So if Tua stays healthy, some injury problems last year. They had Minshew come in. Uh, Minshew left, went to the Thunderbirds. So now John Campbell, the rookie, will have to step in if anything happens. Um, but like in real life, Tua didn't get hurt last season, so maybe that was just a fluke. Now DeAndre Swift, he's been catching a lot of balls. They kind of, based on the uh, Kyle Shanahan 49ers formations, they got a lot of Swift in that McCaffrey role. So he's had some receiving touchdowns, probably more than rushing. And then at receiver, Garrett Wilson uh, playing some good ball early in the season. Kadarius Toney basically non-existent. I forgot he was on this team. Richie James catches more passes, really. Um, and then, of course, Rashid Shaheed, great free agent pickup this year. Last year, he was on the Mounties, and he started the year off with a kick or punt return touchdown, I think. I forgot which one. And at tight end, Cole Komet, 81, pretty solid. The rookie Ellington at number two, and Blake Bell, a lowly 61. Then at tackle, Broderick Jones, young tackle, up-and-coming tackle. Cole Strange, pretty solid. Pretty good rookie center here, Colin Lane, 74. Sam Cosme, 78. And the weak spot is right tackle. I was gonna say, kind of an average line. I feel like in Madden, you can get away with the average line, really, but... Um, I mean, not if the tackle's that bad. But on defense, Will Anderson, superstar. Jeffrey Simmons, so great left end, right end here for the Bulls. And Deron Payne. Uh, Payne, if you go based on some of the highlights for the games, has been playing the best, I think. But great D-line, Drew Tranquil at linebacker. Leighton Van Der Esch. 83 and here Gilbert Oakley great pick in the draft instant starter He's on his way to 80 in no time He's been playing good some of the best corner duos we've seen with DJ Reed and Greg Newsom a junior and the second there and then Justin Reed 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 and love so one of the better secondaries we've seen so far um, strengths secondary and that front three or four they must be 4-3 because they don't really have a lot of linebackers. So Tim Settle, yeah. So besides Tim Settle, this is a tough D-line to manage. But the Bulls have been up and down hot and cold. They kind of can't predict who they're going to be or lose to. They are middle of the road last season. And now the Waffle Bowl champs from season one. Because Patrick Mahomes got hot at the right time. Caps are even better this year. Andrew Thomas was out all of last season on the IR. So... Adding that extra protection from Mahomes is going to be tough, especially when he has two impact receivers like the Chris's, Godwin, and Alave. But here, position by position, as good as backup as you're going to get on this game, 75. So Caps have a little insurance in case something happens. Brian Robinson Jr. has been good for them, as is P. Ryan. And there's Shaden Womack. Nice draft pick for them to add to the mix. A lot of teams you notice, no fullbacks. Caps, though... They picked up two in the free agent market there. So going with more of a power look this year, as well as the main three targets for Mahomes. You really don't care about anyone else. It's Godwin or it's Alave. Uh, even Scantling sometimes takes over a game. And of course, Evan Ingram has been an impact player. Taysom Hill is a good backup, but yeah, Mahomes has got a lot of weapons and a good line to go with it. 78, 78, 87. Oh, and there's their first rounder, Mike Harrison. So he is could he could possibly swing over to left guard soon if he improves a little bit. Juwan Taylor, and on defense, Cam Jordan was added to the mix through free agency. Him with Matabuke and McDonald are a pretty good uh, defensive rotation there. Jalen Carter, of course, is pretty good. Jack Sanborn at linebacker. Yeah, I remember linebacker not being as good, but Logan Wilson makes up for it, a superstar. Uh, I remember him having a lot of interceptions last season and Chris Smith sneaky good backup here so the Caps drafting well getting some good backups there Asante Samuel Nate Hobbs Hobbs playing like a cornerback number one even though they have Asante Samuel Jr. on the roster leading the league in picks Kirby Joseph good safety Mike Edwards doing all right at strong safety 
And then probably the weakest spot is special teams. Johnson. Well, Tommy Townsend's good. But there we go. That's what the Waffle Bowl champions look like. And now a team many thought were going to run away with the title last year. The Condors with Sauce Gardner and Mark Andrews. Top two players on the team. Justin Fields, 85. He's come a long way. Won the MVP last season. He's a superstar. Alfonso Coffey, the new backup. Great name. Uh, Kurt Benkert hanging around the league still. And... Matt Stafford was kind of the backup, the insurance policy, but Fields proved himself MVP, and so now he's out. Coffee is in, and it sounds delicious. Uh, Elijah Mitchell, James Cook, Spencer Bradley. That's the first-round pick, but he's third on the depth chart. Uh, first at receiving, though, I think. He's more of a receiving back, so I think he gets that. Great speed. Um, big fan of the rookie, dra the rookie class. At receiver, Brandon Ayuk. Nicole Hardman, uh, blazing speed. Been pretty quiet early this season. Uh, I've seen more of, I've seen more of KJ Osborne. It seems like, um, and Josh Downs, pretty good fourth receiver. So Fields, he's got some weapons, and here is the main one. Always throwing to Mark Andrews, and why wouldn't you? He's 96 uh, with all the skills at tight end. Tyler Smith, though, good line. Weak at guard, you might say. Not right guard, but right tackle. Trey Pipkins. The third, doing his best, but only 69 overall. But Condor still, that's a good offense. That's um, maybe not as good as offense as it seemed last season. It seemed like they were like a 99 overall offense. But really, one impact receiver, a impact tight end, back is weak. But it was just the magic of fields, I think. I don't know, under Andy Reid's tutelage, running and throwing. Um, it's not like he's surrounded by a superstar cast here. Uh, defense, Grady Jarrett is good. Vita Vea, Michael Pierce. Good free agent pickup by the Condors. 355 for Pierce, 347 for Vea. And that is a massive duo at D-Tackle. 700 pounds of Condor there. And then the linebacking core needs a bit of work, but they do have such a good run stuff in D-Line. Sauce Gardner, Stingley Jr., Pretty good one, too, especially the sauce is so good. Whitehead, 80. Jamal Adams, 89. So the Condors really excel here in the secondary. Now to the Desperados, Derwin James. Another team with a good secondary is their best guy. Chris Lindstrom, great guard. And, of course, we go to quarterback Trey Lance. He's ever the mystery. Played kind of good, kind of bad sometimes. Playoffs played great. All of a sudden, playoff Trey was amazing. P.J. Walker, though, the backup. And then it seems like into season two, he's regressed back to, you know, maybe he's average. He's all right if he's running. Travis Etienne, uh, really good first back for them. Michael Carter, no one else gets at really any carries. It's really the uh, Travis Etienne show for this offense. And they need him because Trey Lance is not always so great. And Debo Samuel, when they had success, it was because Lance was honestly force feeding Debo, which is probably a good idea. They should keep doing that. Corey Davis... Still hanging around the waffle. DJ Chark, 279. So good receiving core there. Especially when you add in Trey McBride. That Trey to Trey connection was great last season and uh, continues on to season two. And the line is pretty average until you add Chris Lindstrom in there. So maybe Moton, Moton and Lindstrom make up for it. But it was looking pretty weak. Miles Murphy, pretty good at left end. 77, he's young. Jaron Reed, though, at right end, not great. The tackle, all three guys in the 70s, even Van Ness at linebacker. Olakun is good, and so is Lanchi at linebacker. So one of the better linebacking cores. Seems like most teams so far don't have good linebackers. Uh, maybe the league is just short on those. Legereus Sneed, though. Carlton Davis, looking good. Jalen Thompson, and then Derwin James, plus first-rounder Damian Hinton uh, are a nice combination and let me see the corners. Yes, yeah, so the corners may be a little bit weaker. They have some good guys. They could, if they could write the ship again and make a late run, um, who knows? They did it before. They could do it again. Dragons, here's a team that is off to a great start on uh, season two. Michael Parsons, of course, is 99. Hawkinson, 91. But let's look at quarterback Kyler Murray, 83. Davis Mills, 69. Nice duo there. Jameer Gibbs. J.K. Dobbins, again, sharing the backfield. 
Gibbs got that speed. No fullbacks for the Dragons, but receivers looking good. They had Marquise Brown and Rondell Moore last year do pretty well for them. And through the draft, they picked up Lonnie Bowie in the middle rounds of the draft. And look at already a superstar, good slot receiver there. And then you add in TJ Hawkinson at tight end. And there's no surprise that they've kicked it up a notch this year. Charles Leno Jr., 80. Christensen, Allen, kind of a an average to below average line there. Um, offensive line, defensive line is where they shine. Neighbors, only 76, um, but the rookie has played amazingly so far. He's had touchdown, sacks, picks, everything. So Jordan Davis, two up the middle. Huge human being, 6'6", 336. Shaquille Leonard, 87. Lloyd at middle, not great, but Greenlaw is high 80s. And then 90 corner, a 90 and 80 corner, pretty good for the waffle. Holland, 86, and Elliott, 80. Santos, so pretty solid kicker and punter. I'm surprised they didn't do better last season, but maybe they just needed that extra couple picks to solidify this team. And now, the Dreadnoughts. TJ Watt, Kyle Pitts, CD Lamb. Dreadnoughts have been up and down, and that's to be expected. They're starting over with Russell Bowman at quarterback. Geno Smith left in free agency. Mike White, the backup. Bowman's played pretty well so far in the season. Ezekiel Elliott is his back. I haven't seen much out of him. Fullback is none. Receivers, he's got some talented receivers. CeeDee Lamb and Tyler Boyd have had good seasons so far. And then Kyle Pitts has been pretty quiet, but... Always good to have him in your back pocket, 93 overall. Could be a security blanket for the young quarterback. And here the line has Jake Matthews, Thune, Brown, Runyon, and Sewell. So you got to like that. Some high 80s guys mixed in there with a pretty uh, decent line. Wormley at end. Oof, the end's not great. BJ Hill, okay at ta uh, D-tackle. And here's where they get most of their pressure. TJ Watt, unstoppable force. Bobby Wagner and Tyree Wilson, only 78. But this is a pretty good linebacking trio to make up for that lackluster D-line. But then at corners, not the best. Uh, safeties, not great. But here, Merrick, only 80, but shut down X-Factor. So interesting how that turned out. A great season last year. And so he is bumped up to be the top guy in that defense or in that secondary. Caleb Shudak at kicker, Stout at punter, not amazing. So the, the Dreadnoughts, they're up and down. They have some nice impact pieces on offense, but they don't always get a chance to shine because this defense gets torched in the secondary. Now the Elks, Fred Warner, Zonehawk, X-Factor. He's amazing every game. Comes away with a pick or a sack or a forced fumble or something. He's all over the place. Jesse Bates. This is a team, though, that was better a year ago, weirdly enough. Uh, they have a young offense that overperformed last season. Anthony Richardson, Joshua Dobbs. You might remember Derek Carr blew out his knee for the Sentinels. He was out for the season. Dobbs actually came in, maybe won 50% of his games, but in the end, they didn't make the playoffs. Uh, maybe he lost a little more than he won. And came up just short well now he is the backup in salt lake city for the elks richardson doing mostly well uh, under a lot of pressure b john robinson hasn't had the same impact as he did last season it seems like so far season's young only has been through a couple weeks uh jalen waddle is playing pretty good so a good starting three but weirdly enough it's been johnston who has gotten the majority of the targets i feel like waddle maybe double teamed i'm not sure laporta uh, picked up through free agency, I assumed, with the addition of Laporta, Aconquo, and adding to this young upstar offense. Look at everyone's under 25, basically, the top three. Robinson's 22, Richardson's 22. Um, they're young and having a sophomore slump so far. The Elks uh, have a good line. Tyron Smith, Skaronski, not a good center, but Corbett. And Brown pretty solid on defense. We haven't had the same impact out of Jermaine Johnson as last year. For the Elks, Gibson, not great. Defensive line might have overperformed last season. Now this season, they don't quite have the same impact. They were in the top three always in defensive stats. Uh, Judon is good, but getting older. 88, Fred Warner, we said impact always. 
but he's only one man. Jimmy Davis is good. Adore Jackson, Emerson Jr. And Oliver make a pretty solid top three at corner. Jesse Bates, obviously impact, X factor, safety. I haven't seen him come away with many turnovers or picks yet. Uh, and Brian Branch and him make for a good duo in the secondary. But it looks like so far, Sam Sloman, Doug Walden. Elks are a team with a lot of good guys, but for some reason that defense isn't quite as tuned in as last season, it seems like. And now Golden Eagles, one of the worst teams, probably. Um, Jimmy G wasn't the answer. Steve Weiss so far has his ups and downs. Uh, mostly good for a rookie. But you can see here the losing must be affecting his momentum or his uh, morale. He's looking lower than he was. He's 72 when he was about the same as Jimmy G. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson and Gus Edwards are okay at back. Pretty solid. Uh, but not great if your QB is not good. Mike Williams, Robinson, Lazard. Kind of a lackluster uh, receiver group. They're okay. But Mike Williams, he, even though he's a superstar, he hasn't quite uh, broken through the way you'd think. Ed Irving, though, uh, solid rookie pickup in this year's draft. He got a touchdown recently. And then Robert Tunyon, they don't really get the ball to the tight ends as much. I remember Tunyon having some huge games last year, but right now uh, not doing much. 76 overall. Great tackle, though. Tunsil, one of the best in the game. Volson, Connor Williams, Ruiz, and Havenstein. So... Overall, a good offensive line, and yet I see them get, maybe they're more of a run blocking line. Uh, Weiss and even Jimmy G before him under tons of pressure. So maybe that's a settings issue. We'll see. Demarcus Lawrence, though, on defense. Great left end. Carl Lawson, uh, 80 down to 79. Some morale issues there on this team. Grover Stewart, 85 is good. So B, B plus defensive line, that's pretty good. Linebacking core, though. Uh, besides Matt Milano is non-existent. Jair Alexander, great shutdown corner, but then not a lot of help. The other guy is getting torched on defense. And Xavier Woods, not good. Hufanga, though, uh, pretty good, strong safety. So you can see the Golden Eagles, couple holes, uh, not bad. The thing about the waffle and doing the fantasy draft is every team is pretty even. So it's always interesting to see how it ebbs and flows. But now let's move to the Huskies, a team that started off 0-3. Season 1 has started off hot this season. So far, they're undefeated as of week 3. Uh, end of week 3, they're 3-0. Justin Herbert is 93. And his backups, Bailey Zappi, rookie, Daniel Everett, Emma Kamara, Devin Singletary. Uh, Singletary is a superstar, and they signed him through free agency. Uh, it was the best running back in the free agent class there and so far the split has been working pretty well for them even drafted a decent third stringer angelo andrews and and no fullbacks but receivers are pretty good devonta smith elijah moore puka nakua now also a new addition was on the antlers last season and also at tight end hayden Hurst has had a good year so far in our second season with atkins and parkinson pretty solid three-man weave here a couple other teams have some Pretty low 60s backups. Great left tackle. Good overall line here. 80 tackles. So solid B line. And on the defense, Bolin for rookie has been playing great. Alongside Christian Wilkins. Good duo at end. Von Hamilton. 80 overall. Luvu. And Contreras. Pretty good rookie. 21 and 75 overall. Good backup. Not a lot going on at middle linebacker. Um, but Browning a solid outside at right. Stephon Gilmore, he's been in contention for most interceptions, both last year and this year. Not much out of Jeff Akuda. Christian Fulton, though, he's had some impact moments throughout the waffle year and showing up in the highlights. And then they've added to it some a late round, I think third or fourth, Jalen Stockton. Uh, Bayard is X factor for them, 92 overall. Kyle Hamilton, 85. So great secondary, Gilmore, Hamilton, and Bayer, then Tyler Bass. They got one of the better kickers and punter. So overall, do the Huskies have a weakness? Middle linebacker is probably it. And the rest looks good, especially with Herbert playing the way he is. They're going to be tough to stop. Could go deep in the playoffs. And here are the Lumberjacks, always struggling. And yet, with Barkley, you can see Humphrey and Baker. It's not like they don't have talent, you know? I guess it's the quarterback is the issue. But Brissett's had some games. He's thrown for some yards. 
Sean Garner, maybe they try him out. I don't know, Trace McSorley, maybe they just put him in and see what happens. Besides quarterback, they have some solid guys. Barkley, they drafted well at running back. Dominique Bolden is a good backup. Uh, bad fullback, but who's using a fullback anyway? Mark Cooper, they got to steal the draft with Devontae Snell. Far and away the best player in the draft by like six or seven points. Um, and Darnell Mooney in the slot. I mean, just an abundance of talent. Noah Fant is a really good tight end. And here, Orlando Brown. Linderbaum, and that's about it. The rest of the line is not great, but still. Zach Allen's okay at end tackle. So they have some holes on defense. So I get why they give up a lot of points on defense here. Linebackers are not great. Marlon Humphrey is good though. So that's something Levi Wallace, only four corners. And uh, at safety though, Antoine Winfield is great. Buda Baker's even better. So this is a team where if they, I don't know if they lean more on the running side, get Barkley involved more. Barkley can catch a little bit. Him and the other receivers should make for a dynamic offense, you'd think. They got a great secondary, but something's just not working. Lumberjacks always on the bottom of the barrel. And now the Monarchs and the Monarch Jackson having a great year so far. Him and Kenneth Walker, great one-two punch on offense. Dynamic running attack. Isaiah Spiller, the backup. Receiving core for Jackson, Keenan Allen, Jameson Williams. It stood out through the first two seasons, probably because his speed is off the charts. And then it kind of drops off Jarvis Landry, not that great. But they have a good tight end. Kincaid gets a lot of catches. Dareshaw at tackle is good. Cleveland at guard. Center, not amazing, but pretty good line. Pretty good enough for this team with Jackson and Walker. They don't need much. They're already good enough. Manuel Agba and Chase Young make a pretty good duo at end. Ed Oliver at the tackle is pretty good. Anthony Barr, Deion Jones, Anzalone. One of the weaker linebacking cores, but they have Tariq Woolen at corner and Bryce Hall. That's good. Jimmy Ward, 84 at safety. Imani Hooker, at 83. So, whoa. Matt Gay, Jason Sanders, and Jake Verity. So if you remember, Jake Verity kicked for one of the playoff teams last year. I can't remember. But interesting technique. The computer always... <laughs> leave it to the computer to come up with something crazy like this. Uh, the Caps had two fullbacks. Why can't the Monarchs have three kickers? So weird. Uh, and then Tress Way at punter. So four people that can potentially kick for them. Interesting technique, but it's paying off. As of this recording, the Monarchs haven't lost. So maybe that's the secret sauce. Get more kickers. Uh, Mounties, so McLaurin there, Darius Slay there, Aaron Rodgers retired. They pick up Derek Carr in free agency. Malik Willis is still there as backup. Played good in relief last year, actually. Um, his, his running ability really comes through, and I think he helped save a game at the end once and won. So. Uh, but Derek Carr is playing well. He played great last season for the Sentinels, and then they were looking like one of the better teams, a uh, top 10 team in the league, until he got hurt. So... Always playing well in Madden is Derek Carr. And then Sam Ellinger, not bad playing above their overall at times. Kareem Hunt. So Hunt, I think I've seen more production out of him last season. Uh, but Spears, solid backup. Manny Anderson. So the Mounties drafted a fullback. 67. Terry McLaurin, 96 overall. Gabe Davis, 85. Duvernay, 79. So one of the better trios in the league. So Knox, even though he's 85, he doesn't really get the... Uh, amount of passes thrown his way. It's a lot of McLaurin and Duvernay and then sometimes Gabe Davis. I feel like I'm not seeing enough Gabe Davis, but that's all right. And then on to the Mounties line. 79 overall, Charles Cross. Banks, 75. Ryan Jensen, pretty good center. Royce Newman, 71. Sterling Dempsey. So the Mounties trying to fix their line. They went Sterling Dempsey in round one of the draft. Slight improvement there. And Pay, only 79, but he plays above his overall. He's always in the highlights. Josh Sweat, maybe it's because Sweat's double team. I'm not sure. Kenny Clark, 88, that's real good. Another rookie starting for them on defense. Monty Campbell, Alex Singleton, 78, and Willie Gay, 77. So pretty average defense. Uh, good secondary, right? Shaquille Griffin, 80. Darius Slay, 90, that's good. And then Micah Hyde, he's been making plays week in and week out, 86. 
not quite the same as he was, but he's still an impact player. D'Angelo again, uh, up and coming safety there. Nice pickup. Marcus Mays, pretty good at 82. So the Mounties, they're good. Not a good kicker or punter. But weirdly enough, the drop off from Rodgers, who was around high 80s, 90s, right, to Derek Carr at 76, has been not huge. They're still playing well. They're a playoff uh, contender. And then the Nighthawks, Ramsey, McCaffrey, St. Brown. They may be a playoff team this year. Bryce Young, he's still a superstar, 79 and growing. He'll be 80s by the end of this year, I'm sure. McCaffrey doesn't get the ball probably nearly enough as he should. And even Achan uh, with that speed needs more touches, but it's tough. Amon Ross St. Brown, superstar receiver. Renfro, Hodgins, all good. Ronald Cheeks. Nice pickup in the draft. David Njoku. We don't hear much out of Njoku, but he is 85. He's ready to get the ball passed to him. So looking at the Nighthawks, it seems like there is, for whatever reason, they struggle. But the team looks good. Trent Brown is good. Alden Jenkins is a great guard. Stromberg's not amazing. Ingram, Maine. So maybe this is why. The line is weak on the right side. They did draft Maine in the first round. So uh, smart move by them. Leonard Floyd. On defense, Wise is 81, and Smith here at D tackle. So defensive line not great. Clowney is 77, but he's gone downhill. Quay Walker's good, superstar middle linebacker. Uh, Jalen Phillips has been making some plays. So between Phillips and Walker, the linebacking core is pretty good. Jalen Ramsey is obviously one of the top corners in the league, and yet the secondary I feel like does struggle at times Delpit Jackson and Ramsey should do better but maybe it's the holes everywhere else they did go into the draft and get Perry straight that's got to help some um, I think they're leading the south right now so Nighthawks have a chance here to make the playoffs they did lead the division early last year if I recall and somehow fell off but they did have a rookie QB who is another year older wiser and slightly better overall Okay, now to the Oilers, one of the worst teams in the Waffle last season. This season seemed to be slightly better, but their pickup of Baker Mayfield isn't exactly panning out. Sometimes he'll make a good play, and other times you think, should they switch to Will Levis? Either way, you can see it probably won't make that big a difference. Both 71, um, as they moved off of Kenny Pickett last season, who was horrendous. Kenny Pickett should never play again. That was crazy how bad they were early last season. Jonathan Taylor, 91. You could argue they should give Jonathan Taylor 35 carries a game, but they won't because the computer loves to pass. CJ Ham, uh, Ham and Carter, two fullbacks going the Caps route. Two fullbacks. Justin Jefferson is living that Larry Fitzgerald existence of having no good QBs, and so his stats just aren't that great. Kind of a waste of a 99 overall player, say Flowers. And Jaden Reed, um, Quez Watkins, amazing speed. But then again, a QB can't really get them the ball. Pat Fryermuth, I would say, has been the most impactful player for the Oilers. Mayfield to Fryermuth has been a thing all year. Taylor Luan at tackle. Kenyon Green at guard. Cole, the line isn't good. Veritucka is pretty good. But then right tackle Driscoll is weak. So maybe it comes down to the line. They can't get the running game going with Taylor because the line stinks. Uh, no, it doesn't stink. It's fine. Uh, Tremaine easily. Nice pickup by the Oilers. They got some good ends for the future. Uh, Hubbard's good now, but easily is nice. And James Stroud, this was their top three uh, pick. They went end and then came back a couple rounds later and found a nice diamond in the rough there. So young defensive ends on the rise. Maybe this is why they are slightly better and they won. It didn't take them seven or eight weeks to win their first game this year. Eric Armstead's pretty good tackle, D-tackle. Hassan Reddick, 91. Nick Bolton, 89. And Marcus Davenport, 77. So uh, just to just having these two guys alone is making their linebacking core one of the better ones in the waffle. Nice corner with Kendall Fuller. Joey Porter Jr., though, and Jordan Lewis. Although Lewis did make a, a play, intercepted Pat Mahomes uh, in the first couple weeks here. Not amazing sec on the secondary. Daxton Hill. Jaquan Brisker, okay. Cade York is fine. Toby Snell, rookie punter. I haven't seen too many of those. So here the Oilers, slightly improved. I wish they were better, but I do enjoy the uniforms and the throwbacks and all that. 
but they just can't get it together. Need to force feed Justin Jefferson. It'd be nicer if these teams put an emphasis on their impact players more, but the waffle is just too random for that. Uh, here are the orbits. A team that had a terrible slide uh, out of the playoff race last season has broken their streak, so the orbits may be back. They have a good quarterback. X-Factor, running gun, Jalen Hurts. Uh, he just can't get hurt because Sidney Ferguson and Carson Strong will have to carry the mantle, and I just don't think they can do it. Miles Sanders, 87. Jalen Warren, 76. No fullbacks. Pretty good offense. Um, relying on Odell Beckham is maybe not that great this late in his career. Jordan Addison, though, good young receiver. Nelson Aguilar is fine, too. So the Orbitz offense is looking pretty good. Juwan Johnson, not bad. Uh, nearly 80. The line, 70s, high 70s across the board here. So that's a solid line. You have a mobile quarterback like Hertz, you can get by, I think. Uh, Lloyd Matt, uh, first round pick though, Lloyd Rathman here at left end. He's been playing well. So they needed help on the defensive line and they've got it. Dalvin Tomlinson at D tackles, pretty solid. At linebacker, Shaquille Barrett is good. Edmonds, real good, 90 and 80 Nuosu. So good linebacking core. Javarius Ward, 88, nice solid corner. And then a big drop off. Um, but a lot of teams have this, so um, they make up for it though with having Mika Fitzpatrick, ball hawking, free safety, and Kyle Duggar. So great safeties, good first corner, and overall pretty good team. The Orbits uh, started off the first half of season one really great. So maybe that was an anomaly, but I think they can get it back. They haven't been playing as well as they look kind of on paper, uh, but we'll see how that goes. Pioneers, one of the worst teams last year. Uh, are closer than you think. I mean, every team in the Waffle is pretty solid on paper. Desmond Ritter, though, is probably where you get into trouble. He and Stetson Bennett um, are the only two QBs on the roster. They didn't address this in the draft. Uh, they had the first pick, and they went with Wendell Blake at end, which is a good player, uh, but we'll get to there. Let's go back up to running back. Javante Williams has been great for them, though. So when they've had success, he's been uh, running wild. James Robinson, good backup, although he doesn't get many carries. T. Higgins, standout receiver for them, superstar still. Devontae Parker has its moments. And then not much of else. Juwan Jennings sometimes, but not really. Will Disley, not many targets. It's mostly T. Higgins or Parker um, uh, making plays. Tron Armstead, though, great left tackle for Ritter. Quint Quentin Nelson, I mean, what more do you want? Frank Ragnow. Zion Johnson, 77. If that's your worst guy, oh, this is your worst guy. But man, just run to this left side of the line. Maybe that's why they're doing such a good... Uh, maybe that's why Javante Williams is having a good time. Ritter, maybe that right side's breaking down for him, but other teams have it much worse, so you can't really complain too much. Uh, Pioneers, defensive line, much better now that they have Wendell Blake because he can easily get to the 80s range. Ionitis, not great. They drafted Miles Finch, which I think is the name of the uh, character from Elf. It's Tyrion from Game of Thrones who comes in, who's Miles Finch. Look it up. Could take over for Ionitis soon, but Ionitis, though, I think he's been playing above his overall. He's been doing a good job. Uh, Davis Gaither, Shaq Thompson, pretty good pretty good linebacking core, but here it's getting old. Uh, Jadavius White, 92, looks good. Rodgers, Glenn Ellison, big pickup. I think they drafted one more rookie that was good. Oh no, he's not that great. But they found Ellison in around the third, maybe second or third. But Pioneers, they did draft pretty well. And Justin Simmons is a great free safety. He trade, uh, pretty good. And strong safety looks good. This is Greg Zerline's seen better days. Uh, his kick accuracy is not as good as it used to be. 71 though is better than some. Mitch Wisnowski, Wisnowski. And their punter's pretty solid. So here are the Pioneers. Maybe they're just a QB away. You know, Ritter, he did lead a comeback recently, but yeah, Pioneers, probably not going to get the first pick again this year. I think they've grown a little bit, which is good. Redwoods, they seem better this year as well. Devontae Adams is their best player. Geno Smith, the new quarterback. Out is Baker Mayfield. Geno Smith signing in free agency. Um, he's been pretty solid. Had a great week too. Derrick Henry, he's still good. 93, no good backups though. They did draft someone, but he's only 68. They actually drafted two someones, Barrow and Barnett. There we go. And at receiver, 
They are real good. Devontae Adams and Michael Thomas were already there, and then they picked up Jimmy Pitts in the first round. So drafting Geno, giving him another weapon, and Pitts has played well so far for a rookie. Dalton Schultz, solid tight end. And then great line here with Tristan Wirfs, Landon Dickerson, Ryan Kelly, and right guard, not so much, but Leo Collins, good right tackle. So if you only have to worry about right guard, it's not that big of a deal, especially with your running back being Derrick Henry. They'll be all right. On the D-line, though, Dana, 76, Foskey, 81, but he's a superstar, uh, and he earned it last year. He played great as a rookie. Right, he was a rookie? Oh, yeah, so only one year pro. Um, big reason why the Redwoods are better this year, I think. Rankins at D-tackle, not that good. Uh, set, I mean, these, these guys are high 70s, and Jack Campbell is young, so uh, improving defense, and another young player on their defense, Witherspoon, so you could see potential for the future, kind of mixed in with some win now guys like Adams and, and Henry. Uh, Josh Hubbard, great pick for them, and I don't believe a first round pick. I'm not sure when they got him, maybe second round. That is a nice pickup. Richie Grant, 79, so that's good for them. Some up and coming uh, players and their secondary as well. James McCourt, they've run into some problems with him. Um, not great accuracy wise. Uh, Ty Long, it's a punter, so whatever. But uh, Redwoods, they're playing well so far. Now to the River Hogs. Aaron Donald is on a tear yet again. Last year broke the sack record. This year might break his own record, who knows. And Kinchin, new quarterback, first rounder, 76 overall, playing well and only getting better. I imagine he'll make it up to the 80s by the end of the season. Better not get hurt, though, because Trevor Simeon is the backup. 57 overall. Nearly a 20-point difference. And Isaiah Pacheco is the running back, 82. Clyde Edwards-Alaire, 78. Not a lot out of their running game this season. I feel like last season they were more of a running team. Um, more of a balance, I guess. No one really runs that much in Madden. Uh, but DK Metcalf, Cortland Sutton, and Joshua Palmer have been a dynamic trio. Uh, pr probably the reason why their quarterback is starting off so well as a rookie. Hunter Henry, 82, solid there with Shoemaker as well. Um, the line, I expect, is not that great because uh, their quarterback is getting sacked a lot. Jonah Williams, 75. Bertrand, 71, 75, 71, 73, and 80. Okay, so one solid right tackle, but the rest is what I suspected. They're not great. Probably below average overall. Sedarius Smith, he is surprisingly an X-Factor player for this team. The defense has had a ton of sacks thanks to this man right here. Aaron Donald is also X-Factor, so arguably, even though they're Older and one player is only 84. One of the best defensive line tandems with DJ Reader as well, 88. So that is a tough defensive line. And here, Taktaki 78, Kendricks 82, Rodriguez 75. Pretty solid as linebacking cores go. And then Trent McDuffie, Eric Stokes. You know, not the best corner group and okay, but not the best secondary group overall. However, Aaron Donald is just so good by himself. That it's making, and him and Reader, you know, because he's got to plug the run, he gets to the passer. These two guys are carrying this team. Uh, it's crazy to watch. Aaron Donald is a cheat code. Um, I don't know whether to adjust the settings or not, because maybe, maybe it's fine. Um, now to the Sentinels, a team that last year was robbed. They could have been on a run towards the playoffs, but Derek Carr got hurt. Roquan Smith is their best guy, but now it's the Jameis Winston era. You could tell they kind of didn't know what to do. They have four quarterbacks, all just kind of meh. I mean, Winston plays good sometimes. He mostly plays well. Uh, but it's a good thing they have... It's a good thing they have him. I don't know. Do you really want to start the Cooper Rush era? Maybe you do. Tony Pollard, 89. So he's been leading on and off leading the league in rushing. I expect he'll be in the mix again this year. No fullbacks. Wide receiver, A.J. Brown and Michael Pittman, one of the best one-two tandems in the league. You can see here, X-Factor, max security for Winston. That's got to help. Tim Patrick, good slot receiver. So one of the best receiving cores. Add in Irv Smith, who's pretty solid. And on the line, Humphreys, 79, 74, 83, 75, and 80. So pretty good. A couple 80s linemen mixed in there. Not bad for Winston. Uh, Autry, 77, Sherwood, 
pretty solid rookie. Nice pick there. Instant starter. Fletcher Cox, not what he once was, but the Sentinels uh, need him pretty badly here at the tackle. They signed him in free agency. Randy Gregory, 81. Roquan Smith, impact player. Uche, 85. Good for right, end, right outside linebacker. Uh, Wuzier and Rock Yasin. Some, some of the better named corner duos in the league. Cisco as well and Bell. So good secondary. I like the secondary. Uh, McPherson, they got one of the better kickers and punters. So here are the Sentinels, not bad. Maybe Winston can carry them to a wild card round. They kind of feel like a pesky wild card team. Um, and now to one of the better teams, Shamrocks. Dominated season one, playing well so far this season. Stroud is 79 only, but he plays much better than that, uh, which is good. Uh, I could come in and upgrade him to his probably true overall probably next year's Madden has him a little higher but we'll get that game soon enough and that'll be that so Dante Foreman they lost Singletary in free agency and they didn't really replace him with much they ro they're just rolling the dice with Foreman who's a good you know goal line back he's fine they're mostly a passing team anyway DJ Moore Stroud has turned DJ Moore well he's already been good he's 90 X factor but he's turned Dotson uh, and Kendrick Bourne into weapons and you know they're only barely in the high 70s, 80s, and he has Dallas Goddard at his disposal. Goddard has had, had Goddard has some good games uh, last season. Him and Gutierrez are probably the best one-two tight end tandem in the league. So Shamrock's offense as good as ever, and they do it on kind of a middling line. You know, they added Zach Martin, and it's a good thing they did because if they didn't, I mean, look at 68, 97, 68, 78, 75. So, oof. They, I mean, I think Sawyer probably comes over to right, so it balances out. But they managed to put up points despite the holes on the offensive line. On defense, they've got Sweat, and they've got Garrett, and Garrett and Donald. Those two just wreck games. Michael Parsons probably add him into the mix. Just can't be stopped. Um, BJ, linebacking core, though. They got Baker and Edwards. That's pretty good. Two out of three ain't bad, especially when you're in nickel a lot of the times. Tyson Campbell, he's been playing well. Good 87, but not really another player to help. Maybe Clark Phillips will come along. He's still young. Farley, same thing. Tyron Matthew. Honey Badger, still 89. He's still up there. Jason Hudson, solid rookie backup. And Ryan Neal, pretty good. 82. Chase McLaughlin. Sam Martin. And so the Shamrocks. And so looking through the Shamrocks, you really appreciate their Zach Martin signing. Um, they really need the offensive line help to go with their young upstart offense and and dominant big Shamrock himself, Miles Garrett. And the Snowhawks two seed in the AFC last season, upset by the Caps. And I think they're poised for another run. Trevor Lawrence is looking good, 89. His backup, Joseph Springs, is rookie. David Montgomery's been playing well at 84 overall. Chuba Hubbard, 77, is the backup. And, whoa, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Sterling Shepard, and Van Jefferson, and that's it. Three-man weave, that's it. That's all. Smith and Jigba, though, he does the work of three receivers. Uh, he's been great both seasons so far. Um, and maybe they're leaning more on the tight ends. They did draft Jonathan Harris in the first round. He's been great as a rookie. Gerald Everett, already good. And Noah Gray, solid third man there. He's at 70. So, look at that. Snowhawks. No receivers. Cam Robinson. Dalton Risner. Bates. And the line's okay. You know, Braden Smith really elevates them at tackle. Uh, Aiden Hutchinson, superstar. He's been great so far. Him and Cam Hayward. I've been in the backfield almost every play. Uh, and Quinn and Williams, who could forget? I mean, 96. They are some of the tops in the league on defense, team defense. Linebacking core, solid down the middle. Really good, actually, considering what other teams have. High 80s guys. They added Preston Smith through free agency as well. Why not? Kyle Van Noy was going down. Preston Smith, only one better, but you get as much help as you can. And here, a lot of corners. Remember, no receivers, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight corners. Javon Diggs and Taron Johnson have been locking teams down. Diggs, X Factor, leading the league in interceptions last year. So, really good job. Xavier McKinney, 83. Brandon Jones, 79. 
uh, two kickers. We got our power kicker and our slightly less power kicker. Yeah, they're about the same. Tanner Brown, sent to the practice squad. I don't know, Thomas Morstead, it's a good punter. So there we go, good punting, good kicking, great defensive line. There's a few teams with amazing defensive lines that I think is the secret sauce to this league because a lot of the playoff teams had a tough pass rush. When you think about River Hogs and all them uh, as well. So steamers, 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 Joe Burrow, Nick Chubb, 99 and 98, and yet they still can't put it together. It's crazy. Dalton Johnson, rookie backup, Burrow, he's putting up some stats, but just I feel like something's missing here. Nick Chubb, he's a wrecking ball X factor. Andrew Beck, the fullback. They've got Hopkins, they got Drake London, Jonathan Mingo, and Greg Dulcich, who is only 77, but he always comes through with at least one huge play a game, I feel like, for the Steamers. Taylor Decker's good at 84. Damian Lewis, 79. 75s, 84, Mason, Becton, 79. So here, so here, good B overall, kind of solid offensive line, defensive line, same thing. High 70s, it's okay. Josh Allen, 86, that's good. Patrick Queen, 82. And Jones, 76. Pretty good linebacking core, pretty solid top two corners. Bill Peppers, 84 at safety. Jaron Curse, 80. So the whole team is kind of like, B, you know, B minus B, and then you get Burrow, Chubb, Impact. So for some reason that is not clicking all the way. I expected them to do better season one, and now to start season two, they start off 0 and 2 before getting a win in week three. So maybe it's too early to tell, but they were kind of disappointing. And now to the Thunderbirds, best player on the team, only player above 90, Max Crosby. And you can see a lot of arrows pointing down. This team has started off pretty bad. Uh, Minshew, the Thunderbirds thought they were in, the Thunderbirds thought they were upgrading by ditching Tannehill, who led them to the Super Bowl, the Waffle Bowl, and replaced him with Minshew. Minshew's been okay; he's average, but not much has changed. They even drafted a guy just in case. They tried switching things up. It looks like they have four QBs, none of them good, and this team hasn't won a game yet. It's early in the season. Najee Harris, Sean Johnson haven't done much. I mean, they have the best fullback in the game, but that just shows you how far that goes. Mike Evans always plays well he's been one of the few bright spots but smith schuster i haven't heard anything out of him um claypool a little bit actually claypool for being 76 and the third guy is playing well at tight end foster moreau 73 he does come through it seems like a lot in the at least last playoffs he had a good playoff push ronnie stanley good tackle avila 73 james 71 sheriff 83 ram check okay so great tackles on the outside that counts for something Pretty good line overall. Sebastian Joseph Day, not great. Williams, not great. 74. DJ Jones. So this team was like the second overall team defense last year. And this year, they've kind of come back to level. Crosby's dominant. Campbell's solid. But everyone else is sort of middle of the road. I feel like Horn and Gonzalez were better last year in coverage. And this year, they're getting torched. Uh, Donovan Wilson's good. With their first round pick, they got Justin Porter. And, you know, he was good. I think um, had potential, hidden potential. Maybe he hasn't unlocked that yet. I thought Jason Myers, good kicker. Pat O'Donnell's punter, whatever. But, yeah, the Thunderbirds going from maybe it's that Super Bowl hangover. Just haven't quite put the pieces back together. Uh, switching from Tannehill to Minshew. And so now let's go to the Tigres. The Tigers, best two players are Bosa and Lattimore. More of a defensive team. Uh, Cousins, still the quarterback. Um, Hooker, the backup still. But funny thing, whenever he comes in, I feel like he does a little bit better. I don't know if it's that, if that's the mobility. Uh, he's got some speed, but we'll see. And for some reason, they're carrying two quarterbacks in the 50s, um, but whatever. Each team has their own philosophy. Damian Pierce, 85. AJ Dillon, 80. Adrian Tompkins, one of the better rookie backs in the league. So they have plenty of uh, firepower here at running back. The offense is not bad. They seem to hover around in games, but then kind of lose it at the end. Tigers were pretty bad last season. Um, hard to tell if they'll recover this season. Mims, Samuel, and Kirk, though, those are solid weapons for Kirk Cousins. Higby as well, 80. So defensive-minded, but pretty good on offense so far. They did lose, uh, I think Trent Williams was 98 or 99 overall. 
that's a tough guy to replace. They did draft Robert Monroe, so that's a start. Uh, 75 is good enough. I mean, 76 at guard, 76 at center. Oof, Hawker. That will maybe Christian can. Someone's got to go over to guard because 62 is going to be uh, a nightmare to block. I mean, if they go against a team with a good defensive line like the Bisons, this guy is going to get eaten alive. Um, but here, yeah, pretty average overall. Trent Williams really elevated that line last season. Without him, it might be tougher uh, for Kirk Cousins. We'll see. Draymond Jones, 78, is okay. Derek Brown, 85, though, real good. The, the tackle is solid, 80 for Milton Williams. Joey Bosa, of course, 92 is good. They drafted, blind, uh, they drafted Brian Florence, who's 75 as a rookie. That's pretty good. CJ Mosley is good. They're doing a good job with the linebacking core. Kay Kayvon Thibodeau. Has been playing well this year at linebacker. So one of the better linebacking cores here. Marshawn Lattimore, real good at corner. And then Forbes and McCreary filling in at two and three. Safeties, though, all right. Amos is 83, but he's going down. Has some sort of morale issue or something. He's 31. So the Tigers, they trying something new with the rookie uh, kicker, Kevin Martin. But he doesn't look good. Rookie punter as well, Jason Parrish. But the Tigers don't seem as good. Um, small improvements here for the Tigers, but overall, probably not looking like a playoff team. We'll see. Maybe Kirk Cousins can get catch fire or something like that. Uh, Voyagers, led by Cooper Cup, Jonathan Allen, AJ Terrell, AJ Terrell. Sam Darnold is still the QB. He's 73. Backup, Marcus Mariota. So there we go. Nice one two punch there. Uh, Austin Eckler, Wrecking Ball X-Factor. He is the main weapon on this offense. Tyler Algier, one of the better backups we've seen. At running back, no fullbacks. A lot of receivers. They're taking the opposite approach. They drafted Carlos Royals in the first round, and he has been an instant impact for them, mostly because of this dangerous speed. 97 overall. Zay Jones is playing well. And Cooper Cup kind of been quiet, actually, for how good he is. But... I mean, if you go one through five, Wilson 78, Gage 78, Royals 79, Jones 81, and Cup 94. That is a deep roster, deep receiver room. Mike Isicki 83, John o. Smith 74. Pretty good one, two for the tight ends. And here they have a superstar left tackle. Good guard, not a great center or gu other guard, but a good right tackle. Franklin Myers is good at end. He's 80, what was that, 85? Dorrance Armstrong is 76. Here, Jonathan Allen, 93. So, two real impactful guys on the D line. And then Josie Jules, solid at middle. Outsides are looking pretty weak, but real good at corner. Um, after the draft pick, Daryl Loud, their first round draft pick, has really kind of bumped them up in terms of the waffle secondary depth, is not great on most of these teams. So, this is pretty good as far as the waffle goes. Epps. 78 at free safety and Gardner Johnson 85 uh, pair him with a uh, pair him with the rookie Trent Humphreys and you have a pretty good looking secondary here Ooh, two kickers superstar kicker Jake Moody and superstar Daniel Carlson so here the kicking game you know I, interesting strategy here of scooping up as many kickers as you can because uh, there's not a lot of good ones so if it comes down to kicking you don't want to be without what if Carlson gets hurt Moody comes in no drop off. Other your opponents have to struggle. Pinion at punter. And so the Voyagers, all of this said they haven't won a game yet in season two. It's kind of weird. They seem like a good team. And here our last team in the league is the Wizards. Tyree Kill is the best player. Receiver, tight end, guard, top three. Brock Purdy. Um, 84, not playing that well. I feel like he's always on the run trying to avoid the rush. Tyler Huntley. Came in, played a little bit last season. He's all right, 70 or 69. Zach Carlson drafted a third stringer there. And of course, still hanging on to Nate Sudfield. Could just put him on the practice squad or cut him, but they won't. Cam Akers, 82. Clay Phillips, a nice solid rookie back up here. Uh, Akers, I feel like more of an impact last season. Hasn't been a big deal. I think the Wizards have get, been getting behind in games, so they can't really establish a run. And then at receiver, Hill, of course, really good. Uh, Christian Watson has played well, probably above his overall grade there. And then Rasheed Rice, haven't heard much out of him, but he's their third receiver. 
And then a tight end, George Kittle, impact tight end. Troutman, not a bad backup. So they got one of the better tight ends. They have one of the best receivers. And yet the Wizards offense, not that good. Purdy just can't seem to get him going. Uh, Rain Man, 75. Betonio, 93. Not a great center. But right side of the line is looking all right. So they have a decent line. And maybe it's because of the center. But I feel like Purdy is always getting blown up. Uh, maybe the league is too good. Too many good pass rushers. Maybe that's a settings issue. We'll see. Uh, Leonard Williams, 84. Good right end. And they added the rookie out of Miami, Josh Thompson, in the first round. Trying to prove this defense. Uh, Daniel Hunter. The defense looks good. Hunter is good. Holcomb, 81, is good. Alex Highsmith. I mean, this guy, two defensive touchdowns already in the season. Uh, Jamil Dean, Banks. Dante Banks has a touchdown. So this this defense has been playing the... This defense has been getting a lot of turnovers. Savage, 76. And Simmons, 83. So they're all right in the secondary. Uh, not great at kicker or punter. But, you know, some teams are hoarding them. So, of course, some teams have to go without. So after all of that, what do you guys think? Leave a comment below. I mean, it's tough. Every team looks good in their own way. And that does it for the roster overview for Season 2 in the Waffle. I'm excited to see how this season will end. Will the Caps repeat as champs? Based on the roster, they just might do it. But something tells me the Waffle has a little surprise for us in store.